I guess word trickled down to 8-bit dough that I have an affinity for controllers. I'm a bit of an aficionado when it comes to game pads. I like to get my hands on a plastic princess or two. So they sent me out a little picnic basket full of goodies, a bunch of gamer goodies plastered in pastel pink. I guess they thought I needed a little color pop for the wall. That's the two controllers we're reviewing today. They're not hanging on the wall because they're deceased. They're hanging on the wall because they're gorgeous and they earned a spot back there. Today, we're going to be double teaming or double fisting, if you will. Way better, less offensive way to word that. We're going to be dual reviewing, if you will, the Zero 2 and the Light 2. A small controller and a smaller controller set at $20 and $35, both for the Nintendo Switch, but we're also going to test the Light 2 on PC to test things like stock input delay as well as the accuracy of the thumbsticks. And by the end of this review, hopefully you can make an educated decision if these two gamepads are right for your needs. Without further ado, let's do a review, 8-bit style. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywopping the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested, tested almost 100, 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, these controllers were sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about them, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. And one of those cons I've mentioned in previous 8-bit dough controller reviews is going to be this instruction manual. Hopefully they do a revision over time. Very short included micro USB cable for charging on the Zero. Basic plastic housing holding your $20 controller in place. This thing is gorgeous, does come in pastel pink or that turquoise, and you are going to have a plastic dust cover over the face. Didn't want to get off me. This controller is incredibly small as you can see. The bumpers pretty much wrap around the entire top and your thumbs can cover the entire D-pad and all four of the action buttons. As for the light too, it is a little bit bigger, but not by much. Almost identical to the original light, however, more sculpted trigger design. And the biggest change is going to be dual analog sticks or joysticks as opposed to dual D-pads, which I think is a more functional layout considering you do still have that D-pad for platformers. You are going to get a USB-C cable, much larger at six foot, just rubber, not microfiber or braided. And we're going to talk in detail about the D-pad, thumbsticks, bumpers, triggers, and face buttons. But I will say off Jump Street, the first thing you're going to notice getting these controllers in hand is how absolutely small they are, which could be a great thing if you are a small-handed gamer and you're looking for a small gamepad. But even with medium to large size hands, I would say, I'm 5'11", these are the flesh bananas that I'm dealing with, and the Light 2 is grabbable, the Zero 2 is incredibly small, but is a step up in ergonomics, comfort, and all the buttons, in compared to a Joy-Con flipped on its side. More on this later. One thing that bothers the ever-living hell out of me is the fact that these two pastel pinks are not the same. The Zero 2 is glossy, and the Light 2 is a flat matte finish, but they are a very different pink. I like them both, but I do think that the light too pops a little bit more than the muted Sakura or baby pink on the Zero. And I'm also not a fan of the glossy materials and hope that on their next version, probably called the Zero 3, that they go with a flat matte finish similar to the light line. Quick compatibility note, this also works on Android, so if you want to Bluetooth to your phone for some mobile gaming and Raspberry Pi single board computers, so if you're running Recallbox or Pi OS, S input, easy word association here, S input, Switch, it's for the Nintendo Switch. But if you're going wired on the PC or you want to connect to Android, you are going to slide that slider, that toggle to D input. This controller does have vibration. I will say the haptics were actually pretty good. They did sound a little bit more rattly than I'd like, a little bit more hollow and tinny inside that shell, but they did feel quite good. And it does still have motion sensor functionality, which is good because a lot of smaller third-party controllers don't. Battery on board is a 400 milliamp hour, which you might be thinking, Kevin, that's disgusting. And it would be if it was on a PlayStation or Xbox controller, that would get you around, well, around three and a half hours of playtime on the DualSense. But this much smaller controller that doesn't have things like adaptive trigger motors, onboard microphone that's constantly listening, and some massive haptic motors in the palms, you can actually get 18 hours of playtime off that tiny 480 milliamp hour battery. And one to two hours of charge time will get you back to that 18 hours of playtime. We already knew it was small and petite, but here's the manufacturer's weight and dimensions. Very small. Plugged up to the PC via one of the USB ports on the front of my tower, and we are recognized by name as 8-Bit Doe Light 2, and I want to see what these thumbsticks do. Two things I want to make note of, and don't worry about the fact we do not have the visual representation of the thumbsticks. That's okay. We can still get a lot of information or data by looking at axes 0, 1, 3, 2, and 5, which is going to be the horizontal and vertical movement of the left and right 
analog sticks or thumbsticks, I should say. Analog sticks is PlayStation jargon or terms. Thumbsticks, that's kind of universal. That's all encompassing. But there is zero chance of out of the box stick drift with these particular modules is when I move them to and fro and then stop, they all bounce back to 0.00392, which is as tight and calibrated as potentiometer thumbstick modules are gonna get right out of the box. Something to note, if you don't toggle that dip switch from S to D, the controller won't be recognized on PC whatsoever, although the light on the bottom will be illuminated. Might confuse you, throw you for a loop or something. I'd like to run X input test to get the stock input lag or delay by measuring the refresh slash polling rate. In order to do that, we need to spoof the PC into thinking that this Nintendo controller is indeed an Xbox 360 controller. Awesome, and in order to get compatibility with Rewaz, you need to have that dip switch in S, not D, which is, I know, crazy because earlier I said you gotta put it in D to get compatibility even recognized with the PC in order to use this program, switch it back to S. Then I got a little profile here called switch to Xbox 360, but nothing is currently happening because nothing is applied. Please apply the configuration to remap it. Okay, hit apply up here. Boom, now move my face. And now as you can see, it is ready for us to run the test because it thinks that we have an Xbox 360 controller. Wow, that is a lot of input lag or delay. Got my thumb starting to get tired because I have to provide so many inputs. And since it's just such a slow connection as you're seeing a lot of 15s, 20s, 23s, my God, oh, my thumb was starting to cramp up. An average of 22 milliseconds, incredibly slow wired connection here. We're gonna overclock it and see if we can get something a little bit better than what we're seeing as a stock 45 hertz clock. I strongly doubt that, but we are seeing some pretty horrendous results here. Not very consistent either with the minimum and maximum very wide from each other. Let's overclock. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, I did switch that dip switch back into the D position and stop running Rewaz so it is recognized as its native controller, which is gonna be generically labeled as HID compliant game controller under the child name. As you can see, this controller is not overclocked with an estimated four milliseconds of input lag or delay. We didn't see that in our testing. Let's overclock this bad boy. 1000, install service, and you open. Filter on device, that's the next step. Install service, I'm gonna open. Unplug, she's no good if you don't replug. HID compliant game controller, yes, overclocked. 1000 hertz polling rate for an estimated one millisecond of input lag or delay. Doubtful, let's test it though. Back in Rewaz, remap is reinitialized or turned back on. And we are running a test again, seeing no results whatsoever, meaning this board is polling rate locked. Uh, good news, I, I've got good news and bad news for you. The bad news is this controller is freakishly slow with a wired connection to PC. The good news is the majority of gamers that pick up this controller are gonna be casually playing with it on Switch. You're not really counting the milliseconds of input lag or delay or anything, but you are now a little bit wiser for knowing that this controller has about 20 milliseconds of input lag or delay when wired to PC and is not susceptible to being overclocked due to it being pulling rate locked on the board. Now, both of these controllers have a completely sealed back design with no exposed screws of the Phillips head or T variant, which is cool. It makes the controller look really clean and sleek for the purpose of a teardown or disassembly. It's an extra step to have to pry off the back panel or plate. Not gonna do it with these two gorgeous controllers and scratch up this beautiful pastel pink colorway, but pictures or videos on screen here of the internals, the guts of these controllers, in case you're interested. In the instruction manual, it makes pairing this controller seem more difficult than it really is. It says to hold down start and then Y. You really don't need to do any of that. You just press start. It flashed three times with this blue LED, then went solid, and then it automatically paired up. And as you can see, I am now controlling my Switch console with this little itty bitty controller. But we're going back to change grip slash order and we're going to pair the other controller. This toggle needs to be set to the left to S, which is for Bluetooth connection. Then you can either hold down the sync button for about three seconds and it will pair that way or wake up the controller and then press both the triggers and you can connect that method as well. Now you cannot wake up the console with this controller, which kind of sucks. You have to manually get your buns up off the couch and turn on your switch. Put her to sleep, no problem, but she won't wake back up. The most practical use case scenario I can see for the Zero 2, where the original Zero is going to be replacing Joy-Cons when you flip them on their sides horizontally, pop on this little bumper trim section, turn it on its side. I've never been a huge fan of this, not just because it's tiny and ergonomically hard to get a grip on, but if you had the right Joy-Con, the thumbstick is dead center, which is freakishly inconvenient. Convenient. And the second gripe is going to be this little haunch for the trigger. It just does not feel good right here in the old middle finger nook or cranny. Neither of those are a problem on the Zero Two, and since they are very inexpensive, this would be a better option. Maybe picking up three or four of these if you play Mario Kart and Mario Party, rather than having all your guests have to use Joy Cons flipped on their side because nobody really likes it. They're not going to complain, but in their mind they're thinking, "Wow, this controller kind of sucks. I wish this guy had something else in his arsenal." Your arsenal is going to be fully loaded with eight bit. Dough. Oh shit, it, preferably in pastel pink. Moving right on to the D-pad, the direction buttons have always been renowned on 8-bit Doe controllers and that is no different. There is a fantastic pivot point which allows you to do some really sweet roll-offs and a good D-pad is very important on the 
Zero too, considering that's your only movement input. There is no analog stick or thumbstick. As for the light too, the D-pad also feels good. It does require quite a bit more resistance, which I do want to note, but still has that same distinct pivot point and feels fantastic. As for the analog sticks, they feel great. And this might be a placebo effect or something weird, but it definitely seems like there is increased tension on the right stick, which is so weird because obviously nobody's picking this up for first person shooter use on PC or anything like that with the wide, vast world of other options you have to fill that particular niche of gaming. But it really does feel as if there is about 40% more resistance or strength required to move this right analog stick. And, you know, I, I really tested that with different fingers pushing it. And yeah, it definitely feels like the right stick. I don't know if I have maybe a faulty thumbstick module or what. If that is the case, I'm not complaining because it feels good having that increased right stick resistance. I like it. Then we get to the face or action buttons. And this is quite interesting. I greatly prefer the ones on the Zero Two, which kind of sucks because this is so small. I'm practically never going to use this little guy. The Light Two is big enough to where I would pick this up and occasionally use it for some platformers on Switch, but the face or action buttons just feel really sloppy. They are a membrane switch, so there's a rubber plunger mechanism under there. That's not the issue here. Most controllers do use a membrane switch, but I just don't like the raw guttural feeling, the user interface of pressing these buttons, and I think I've deciphered why. They're slightly larger on the Zero Two, a little bit more spaced out, and also the shape is more flat as opposed to more curved or rounded on the Light 2, which I think feels fantastic. But they're both good, no complaints here. As for the bumpers or shoulders, buttons on the light too. They feel great. Good ergonomic position. They are virtually silent. Super quiet. And you can press them with the middle of your index fingers or with the ball. And there's no weird swivel or hinge point. You can press them virtually anywhere. And as for the triggers, because that is a new upgrade or selling factor from the first light, is they now have this sculpted ergonomic haunch, which does feel very good. Your middle finger rests underneath that haunch, and then your index finger covers the trigger, kind of pinching it in there and my golly, it feels great. And the ones on the Zero Two feel good, but they are freakishly loud in comparison to every other button on this thing. Like face buttons, pretty quiet. D-pad, pretty quiet. And then bumpers. 12 gauge shotgun. They're loud for sure, but they do feel good as they do wrap around virtually the entire top of the controller. So you can just wrap your little meat hooks over the top there. And it does feel good. I get the appeal of this thing, man. Chuck it in the backpack, pop it out, play some smash over at your boy's house, pop it back in the bag. <laughs> It's a good time. Here in the market for a $35 small controller or a $20 smaller controller that have a phenomenal D-pad, good face buttons on the light, great face buttons on the Zero. Or maybe you want that turquoise or pink color pop in your theme or setup. But in my opinion, the two main selling factors here, other than the D-pad, is going to be the compact size, the freakishly small dimensions, which could be great if you have small hands. Both these controllers are right up your diagon alley. The Zero 2 is really small, obviously, as you can see. It's like, a, it's like three sticks of gum smashed together. But they are inexpensive at $20 and I have seen them go down to around 15. So you could pick up four of these for around 60 bucks, which is pretty much the price of one Xbox or PlayStation controller. And everyone has a functional, usable controller for Mario Party or Mario Kart. Probably wouldn't use the Zero Two for Mario Kart. Says the D-pad, not the little joystick. The Light Two and Zero Two are linked in the description below, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself, and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number, and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding, starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.